candles are one of the most popular decorating items, but guess what? We've all been picking them out wrong. Apparently, you're supposed to smell the inside of the jar lid. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And we're going to learn tons more candle information while I'm here at Yankee Candle. I'm hitting the road, searching for answers, and finding great design. It's a quest for beauty, function, and of course, inspiration. If you really want to smell a fragrance, smell a candle, the best way to smell a candle is to actually not smell it like this, but actually smell the lid. And when you smell the lid... Oh my gosh, you actually do smell better. There's a big, big difference. And what, what's happened is the fragrance, when it's all condensed in here like this and trapped, it, it's called what's called creating headspace. And the fragrance actually accumulates in the top of the lid. And when you smell it, you actually get the full body of the fragrance. And believe it or not, fragrance is an awful lot like wine or, you know, as you're thinking about a great uh, dish or something you're eating. Um, your taste buds in general, they say, is about 20% of your, when you eat, yeah, it's about 20%. Is. And the other 80% is actually your olfactive sense, your sense of smell. And likewise, where you have a top, middle, and base note of the, of the wine, and that's why when people that are really wine connoisseurs, they, they slosh it around first and they smell it before they actually taste it. It's the same concept. You're getting the full body of the fragrance. And um, typically when a customer will smell a candle like this, all they're getting is what's called the top note. And when you smell it in here, you get the full body, which is the top, the middle, and the base note. You know, I've been struggling for years, like, and you'll practically put your nose all the way in because you can't smell anything. But when you smell it here, oh, it's, it's great, so it? nice. And it's the same experience as, as if it was burning. So when you light a candle, um, what's actually creating the fragrance effect in your house is the wax pool. So when the, the wax... It's not the flame at all. It's not the flame, exactly. The, the flame will trans, transition the wax from a solid form to a liquid, and that liquid, when it heats up, is what releases the fragrance into the air. I've heard that candle warmers make candles smell better. And is that because of the pool of water? Well, I think... Or, I mean, pool of wax. Yeah, what am I talking wax. about? Yes, no, no, no. <laughs> I think um, candle warmers are interesting in that they operate under a similar principle that um, some of our tart warmers or our oil warmers work, which is they're warming the wax and in many cases will create a wax pool. Um, and, and those work well at first, but the difference is and why candles work really probably better than anything is the wax actually consumes as well because once a wax goes to liquid, the fragrance is released. Once it solidifies again, if you haven't burned off some of that wax, all you've done now, all you have is unscented wax left. And so oh. what you're going to want to do is that's why a candle is actually you know, the, the phrase we use around here, it's not rocket science, but it is candle science. And the whole idea is that the, the wax pool actually services as the way to get the fragrance in the air. And then the flame uses the wax as fuel. And so it burns away. And so over time, that's why the candle you know, wick goes down and the whole candle goes away. Whereas in a candle warmer, it might be good that first time or that second time, but over time, it's not going to work because it's driving all the fragrance out of the candle and all you're left with is unscented wax, really. Basically, you don't want to use a candle warmer. Well, again, we recommend the, the beauty of a candle is in part the, the flickering light. and The ambiance. Exactly. Everybody looks better in candlelight. Exactly. And you can't, you can't beat candlelight. Basically, then, when you use a candle, it takes a while for the scent to start to build because it takes a while for the wax pool to build? That's correct. And, and depending on the type of candle you have, a wax pool can happen quicker or slower, depending again on the type of wax and the type of wick and the type of candle you're using. But in general, you know, if you wait about 15 minutes, a half hour, you'll get a nice wax pool in most candles. And at that point, your whole room will be uh, enveloped in fragrance. What about all of the soot rings on ceilings? Because I know a lot of people don't like that about candles. Yes, and, and that's um, it's really interesting because you hear that periodically. And, and there are so many factors when you, when you think about flames, right? So it's airflow in your room. If it's a windy room, your flame will flicker. And actually, the more your flame flickers is the more you actually create soot um, or the black rings right, or whatever yeah, it is that people rings. call. Um, and, and what that uh, really, it, it's just saying that the flame isn't working optimally. And there's a number of things that you can do as a customer. And this, this is true of any candle, is if you make sure your wick is actually trimmed each time before you use it. So you only want a, a very small wick. And uh, once you've lit that and it's burned, and now the next time you come to it, you want to go back and make sure that that wick is still relatively small, you know, about a quarter of an inch. Because the, the longer the wick, the more uh, apt you're going to see the flickering, which is going to create more of that. that I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, so it, 
the wick is actually one of the, the most important things any customer can take. And it literally, a pair of scissors, and you just cut Chop it, it off. Bef before you light it, okay? not <laughs> while not it's after. lit, before you light it. Um, additionally, you want to make sure you always have a quality candle. Um, you know, there are a lot of candles out there that, as I said before, you know, the rocket science versus the yeah. candle science. The candle science part of this is there's, there's a way that you can integrate the fragrance and the the dyes and the colors and the actual different types of waxes that come together and then the size of the wick and all that. That actually, there's all sorts of variables that are in play there. So most of the better candle companies are gonna go and test that extensively before they put it on the market. So I'd always encourage people to make sure they stay with you know, a reputable candle company. Um, and then lastly, I think another uh, little trick that people have been using, and it doesn't matter again what type of candle you have, and if it, if it works really well, putting what we call a little topper on it here, which um, actually is pretty cool because it illuminates through the, the light, but it actually controls that airflow that I was talking about before. And by controlling the airflow, it minimizes the flickering. And so you actually even get a better performing candle um, through programs like this. We call this a luma lid. And you just put it on the, it's like a candle topper. You put it on there, you can light it. And uh, that's another great way of, of uh, minimizing that. How long does the average candle last? I, completely uh, variable on that um, in terms of number of burn hours which is probably yeah. the easiest way to think about it anywhere between our larger candles are anywhere between 100 and 150 hours and the reason it's such a broad range is there's a lot of factors I mean the relative humidity in your house the, the temperature how long you're burning it at one time so if you actually burn your candle for an hour and you blow it out in another hour and you blow it out you know that actually is probably not as good for your candle because it doesn't allow the wax pool to fully um, you know, take the, the full circumference of the candle. And so over time, you're gonna build up wax on the side. And that's one of the things oh, that- Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, and one of the things, again, that we really look hard at is making sure that you get full consumption or near full consumption of the candle because no one wants to leave anything behind when they right. buy something. And um, so the, the more you use it, so if you use it for two hours, three hours, four hours at a time, they actually, you actually get more burn hours out of that. And you wouldn't think it's that way. Yeah, you would think it would be it's the totally opposite. totally counterintuitive. Yeah. Check out my website, askthedecorator.com, to discover more about this topic, read informative how-to articles, or watch other videos from my trip. You'll find a variety of helpful decorating advice when you stop by.